James Buddy McGirt, and he goes up against a rugged opportunist in James Hughes. This is another test for McGirt's shoulder. He feels the rough part of his rehabilitation is now behind him. I'm going back to the old Buddy McGirt, you know, whereas I really couldn't showcase the first time I fought in USA, you know, last January because of the injury. You know, I, I couldn't faint. I couldn't, you know, do things that I like to do, you know, and do a lot of crazy moves because of, of the predicament on my shoulder. McGirt last January successfully defended his welterweight title, fighting with a shoulder injury he thought was just tendonitis. Once he was in the fight against Gennaro Leone, the left hand was essentially out of commission. Just two months later, not willing to pass up a shot at Pernell Whitaker, McGirt, claiming the shoulder was fine, tangled with Sweet Pea. But early on, the shoulder was gone. But McGirt, a one-handed fighter, hung in to lose a close decision. It was discovered that the shoulder injury was much more serious than previously believed. McGirt had suffered a torn rotator cuff. His career was in jeopardy. But following surgery and eight months away from the ring, McGirt still looking to be acknowledged as pound for pound the best fighter in the world, ventured back, putting the shoulder to a test against Nick Rupa. Although he didn't feature that left hand, McGirt felt 10 rounds versus Rupa was cause for encouragement. To me, that fight just felt like my whole career, my whole life. You know, because um, after the World Cup fight, as you know, I was written off. You know, so that's it for Buddy McGirt. There's no more. You know, I was put into the graveyard. You know, and um, to come back, you know, way ahead of schedule and, you know, to fight a tough guy like Nick Rupa and, and to fight him the way I did and, and come out victorious, man, and to, to get myself back to where I want to be, you know, was just like the greatest feeling ever. It's like I'm being born again, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm back to doing my old tricks that I used to do before, but before I couldn't do them because I couldn't get myself in certain positions because I couldn't hook, you know, where sometimes I would faint a guy, you know, I would faint and move and I'd be here, but I can't hook, so it's a wasted move. Whereas now I can faint, you know, and if I'm here, I can shoot the uppercut, you know, and I can just do all my own moves like I used to do, and, you know, and it's back to the grill again, and I'm having a good time again. Tonight, McGirt will have James Hughes in front of him, a relative unknown who has a reputation as an aggressive, tough guy. Hughes looks to seize the moment. Well, I can just about do anything, but I like to try to get a guy to slug with me if I can. Uh, but I can box, too. But uh, I like to keep a lot of pressure on a guy. I come in the ring in shape, uh, try to throw nonstop punches. My game plan is just to stay on top of him, not let him box. Uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. Hughes will be right in the face of McGirt, but uh, he is certainly going up to a level he has never faced before. You can see McGirt uh, dissecting a guy like Hughes. What is uh, Buddy McGirt trying to find out in this fight? Well, the last time that we saw him against Nick Rupa, he did not look yet quite up to the Buddy McGirt of the past. I mean, that very good Buddy McGirt with the good left jab, the powerful left hook. What he's looking for here in this fight is to move up a little bit, still work his arsenal, his punches, test out that left hand and make sure that that shoulder has repaired. All right, let's check out the tail of the tape of these two fighters. McGirt actually checks in. This is the heaviest he has ever weighed for a fight, 151 and a quarter. And uh, Hughes has that uh, reach advantage. McGirt will be turning 30 in a couple of weeks. We're in Fort Lauderdale. These are the rules in Florida. No standing eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the bell only in the final round, and it's a 10-point must scoring system. We are ready for the intros of the fighters, so let's go up to our ring announcer, Mark Beto. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the War Memorial Auditorium in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, as Budweiser, proud to be your bud, presents USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Under the promotion of main events, in association with Florida Boxing Authority and Rush Entertainment, Stephen Benson, promoter. Your matchmaker is good guy Jim Waldrop. Tonight's bouts are under the sanction of the Florida State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Jimmy Resnick. Your attending executive director, Don Hazelton. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds junior middleweights. Your referee from Hialeah, Florida, Billy Correction, El Caballero, Jorge Ortiz. Introducing in the red corner, wearing the black trunks, 
weighing in at 150 and three quarter pounds with a professional record of 17 wins, five defeats, 13 knockouts. He hails from Mobile, Alabama, James Hughes. Hughes. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks, white trim, white accessories. He weighs 151 and a quarter pounds. Professional record, 60 victories, three defeats, one draw. He has 44 knockouts from Brentwood, New York. He is ranked number three in the world by the WBC, former IBS junior welterweight and WBC welterweight champion, James Buddy McGurk. McGurk, 10 rounds, junior middleweights. All right, we went, we went over the rules in the locker room. Any questions? Any questions? I want a clean fight. Keep it clean, all right? Tap gloves, go to your corners. Touch gloves. Let's dance, Let's baby! <laughs> dance. James Hughes uh, bring a little bit extra uh, to the ring. Buddy McGirt. It's one a fight. Of, it's not a uh, dance. Uh, <laughs> He's got his, his dancing boots on. Would you be minute. surprised if I told you James Hughes is a graduate of the Tough Man Contest? But Buddy McGirt, the man he's going up against tonight, one of the best technicians in the world of boxing and uh, still testing the left shoulder, and that's uh, what we'll keep an eye on, the left arm. Oh, yeah, and in this fight, that is a very important weapon because of the pressure that James Hughes will give you. A left jab will keep Hughes from rushing in like James loves to do. Hughes likes to get on the inside and just blast away. There's, he makes no bones about it. Yep. I am an aggressive fighter. He wants to turn every fight into a brawl. He's known to throw about 150, 175 punches around. And very durable. Hard shots from him. He likes moving on the inside. It, and, and could play right into Buddy McGirt. However, this is a different McGirt than when we saw him earlier in his career when he could control those fights from the outside, when he used that lateral movement like he's using there. How important that left hand is. Mm -hmm. Especially to get out the, the jab. McGirt said in his fight with Whitaker, unable to use the jab, didn't, uh, the left, didn't mean that he just wasn't able to use his most powerful punch, the left hook. It also meant that he really couldn't jab. He was just pawing with the left. Couldn't get in clinches. He couldn't push his opponent off. Now, you know, I've said before how important a jab is to a fighter. That jab is important because it can land on your opponent. It's both offense and defense. You can push it hard or use it soft. You can use that left hand to maneuver your opponent where you want to strike him with that right hand. You reach over, pull his hands down, and then nail him with the right hand. That jab is so effective. I asked McGirt uh, before the fight uh, where his shoulder was on a scale of 1 to 10. He says it's about a 9. But he said that before the Rupa fight. And uh, again, did not use that as a chief weapon. I think Buddy McGirt also, uh, whether he uh, tells us exactly how the shoulder feels or not, may also be testing the waters to see how far he can go what are some of the things now he should try out knowing that he does not have that full use of the shoulder anymore yeah, if that is the case yes however sometimes that can hurt you because you tell yourself that shoulder's fine i'm fine i'm not hurt i'm okay then you use it anyway and it's not a hundred percent you could rip it once again well, Buddy McGirt uh, looking forward to a date against Yuri Boy Compass, 54 and all, ranked number three. Or check that number two in the WBC. On the same card of Pernell Whitaker against Santos Cardona, who's ranked number one in an elimination bout. And then uh, McGirt has on his mind moving ahead to uh, fight Pernell Whitaker. Oh, he'd love a fight like that. However, why would Whitaker fight him at this point in his career? I don't know. Well, we'll pause for these words from our local cable stations and then try to figure that out when we return. Welcome back. Good house on hand at the War Memorial Auditorium in Fort Lauderdale. And this is uh, one of the reasons they are here to see uh, one of the finest fighters in the game, James Buddy McGirt, who will be turning 30 on the 17th of this month. He's been fighting as a pro nearly 12 years. 
And he flips out that uh, left jab, slicing at the face of James Hughes, who's 28 years old. Hughes has won the six in a row since he was stopped by Vincent Petway in the third round. Other big name on the ledger of Hughes was a 10-round decision loss to Maurice Blocker. Yeah, he was 9-3, nine, nine wins, three losses, seven KOs going into that blocker fight. That fight back in November of 1989. James Hughes loves to be fighting here at the War Memorial because he wants to make this fight a war. In fact, between rounds, Wally Dinkins, Jerry Tillman urging their man to get on the inside and, and dictate the pace, control the pace by pushing this man backwards. That's a easier thing to say than to do. Muddy McGirt is so slick. This lateral movement that he uses, that jab, if, if you cannot move away from that jab, you run into it like a fighter like uh, James Hughes is.